The proposed changes will see coverage raised from $75,000 currently to $100,000 per bank per person. The government says about 89% of depositors in Singapore are currently fully insured under the scheme. Raising the coverage should boost that figure. They want to increase this over the 90% level, uh, and uh, the data suggests that if they increase it to 100,000, uh, about 91% of depositors will be fully insured. Now. So I, I think that's what they're essentially trying to do, trying to uh, cover more people in the event that uh, something goes wrong with uh, the bank that, uh, that these people bank with. The scheme protects the savings of Singapore account holders should there be a run on their bank. Like what happened to Credit Suisse in Europe and the Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, in the United States earlier this year. One takeaway from these events is that diversifying your savings across banks is a good safeguard. So, for example, if you've got a couple of hundred thousand uh, and if the deposit insurance is only for 75,000, uh, then maybe you want to diversify it across two or three different banks uh, just to ensure that you know you get you know uh, protected in the event that something goes wrong. Uh, so so that, that basically is uh, one of the things that an investors can do, uh, essentially, to, to protect their savings. Experts warn against complacency, believing that such a thing could never happen here. The situation over the US is a wake-up call. It is important for us to realise that there is always that possibility that banks can fail. And if we don't have this as the IC, we don't, have, we don't do certain things to protect ourselves, it is possible that we can lose our deposits. And even if we can get our deposit back, it may take a while. What's going to happen in the six months and 12 months when you need money to run your lives? So I think it's important for us to know what's happening out there in the world and that there is always that possibility something like that can happen in Singapore. A century-old bank like Credit Suisse can fail. Um, our banks can fail too. But what else should Singaporeans do to safeguard their savings? Make sure that we save and invest through or via licensed entity. At least there is some protection uh, from MAS. Right? If for any reason that institution fails, there is a recourse. Right? Or if there's malpractice, mis-selling, there is a recourse. Uh, if we put our money with unlicensed entity, we never know when we're going to be scammed. And if we fall prey to a scam, it's very difficult to go to MAS and say, look, you know, I put my money there and I want my money back. So the first thing is don't put your money with unlicensed entity, no matter how attractive that yield or that interest rate is. There must be a reason why they're giving such a high yield or interest rate, so avoid that. And it's also important to know what exactly SDIC covers and what it doesn't. It covers things in your current account, in your fixed deposit, um, your CPF monies that are, that are put there, for example. It doesn't cover investments and it doesn't co cover uh, foreign currency investments as well, which tend to be quite popular. You know, so, for example, if you've got savings, but you put it into US dollar or foreign currency deposits or you do, um, you know, what, what's pretty common, do currency investments, those aren't covered under this uh, deposit insurance. We need to be aware that, you know, the robo-advisors are also creating cash management portfolios and underlying these cash management portfolios are actually unit trusts. They are unit trusts that are either investing into uh, bonds, it could be short duration bonds, but they are bonds. There are cash, man, uh, cash management portfolios whereby the underlying unit trust is investing into fixed deposits. Now, they can be fixed deposits, but they are unit trust structure. SDIC doesn't, pro uh, doesn't provide protection for a unit trust structure because a unit trust is looked upon as an investment and you have to bear that personal responsibility if there is a capital loss. SDIC also doesn't cover any losses as a result from scams. So Singaporeans need to safeguard themselves against that as well. If, if I had one line to describe it, it's just ask yourself, what is the purpose of this person contacting you? Like what, what are their motives behind it? So I think from that baseline, you can start to see like um, whether this is a scam or whether this is um, something else. So um, 
because nowadays really the scams are like getting way like way more creative than than usual and even it's not just the old people getting scams and for those who feel that the safest thing is just to leave your savings in the bank don't forget about inflation your savings can be eroded that way as well with inflation being at such a high and aggressive rate, right, putting your money in the bank itself may, might not help you beat inflation, especially with the interest rates right now. There are quite a lot of different investment options, but if you want to um, keep within SDIC, you could go for um, insurance savings plans, or you could go for like um, ILPs as well. Or the other option is to invest directly in um, government bonds. If you want to move beyond SDIC and actually beat inflation, which is at 5 point something percent, you'll have to go for more riskier assets and those aren't covered by SDIC.